So welcome. Uh, I'm Lisa Melody, the Director of Athletics at Williams College. We're happy to see you here today. Uh, welcome you and hope your students are all moved in and you're all feeling settled and they're feeling settled and you're feeling good about your Williams experience so far. And we're going to try to talk a little bit more about what might be another chapter of your uh, child's life. And that's about if they're engaged in varsity athletics or junior varsity athletics at Williams. It falls under our purview in the athletic department. Um, and we all want I know you want, we want what is best for your children and for our student athletes. And it's just sort of nice, I think, we've found in the past to have our coaches talk a little bit about what our program is, what our values are, what we provide, what interactions with coaches uh, might be like. Um, and, and so your, your student might know how to, your children know what they can expect a little bit, and also how you can be a positive part of the team, support the experience, and hopefully provide some reassurance that your child will be well cared for. Um, this is very much a period of transition for your students, you have helped them arrive here. They have practiced a lot, they've studied a lot. Uh, they are high achieving students who are now at Williams College. It's very exciting for everybody. Uh, we are, have again, as I said, a lot of programs here. We have 32 varsity teams, roughly 750 athletes, some junior varsity teams, club sports and intramural sports um, happen out of the Office of Student Life are overseen there. And then we also oversee physical education. We have a physical education requirement for our student athletes, some of which can be met through participation in um, junior varsity and varsity athletics and club sports. Um, and your students will hear more about that. The physical education courses are caught, taught mostly by our coaches. Um, we have a lot of success here, which is a lot of fun for us. Um, but we're really focused on the personal growth and how athletics is a part of the liberal arts education and that it, we're hoping that it's a fairly seamless and also complementary uh, part of their learning here on campus. Um, and so we're really focused again on, on a student's development in the context of being on a team. We really try to think again about how we're defining success around again academic success, our engagement with the broader college community, um, the teaching that our coaches do who are all faculty members which sort of is representative of our role as teachers on the, on the campus, um, and again, and what kind of growth and development do students have as members of our team, and we're not talking solely, obviously, about their growth. Do they get you know, a better jump shot? Do they tee the ball up better than they did before? But are they um, growing as people? Are they learning to deal with failure, success gracefully, good sportsmanship, working with their teammate, working with team differences? Um, and again, our coaches are, are their teachers and mentors and guides through this really again trying to our coaches are really passionate about their sport they're experts in their fields just like their professors are experts in their various fields and are really excited about sharing their knowledge through sport um, with their with their with their athletes um, we're really focused on building team which in some instances is quite different than what they may have been coming from recently uh, if your child played primarily in a club sport system there might be less of a focus on on team building and a little bit more of a focus on being recruited, showcasing, maximizing their talent, and that will be a real shift for a lot of them um, to be thinking a lot less about their own personal role and shining and much more about the team success and team goals and team values. And again, the coaches will talk somewhat about that, but again, that might feel, feel different to them. Um, as a mother of three children who last year among them played on 11 different teams, um, I know, again, what you've done, how many miles you've driven, how many uniforms you've washed, how many times your child went to a game in a dirty uniform, because it didn't get washed, uh, water bottles, and fast food along the way. And, you know, if, you, if you've watched this video that they now post, you've heard this story before, but um, I had this epiphany. I was the women's soccer coach here for 17 years and had coached soccer for a long time, and my daughter was playing soccer on a youth team. And I was at the game and she wasn't in the game and I was watching the game the way I'd been trained to as a coach. I'm watching in transition, you know, how's the defense setting up when the team loses the ball, if they've won the ball on attack, what kind of runs are they making, how are they setting it up. And then my daughter came into the game and suddenly she was the only thing on the field. And I'm just watching her, everything she's doing. And I realized, because I had been coaching for so long and not really been a parent in that context, that parents see the game very differently than coaches see the game. And sometimes that's where there's sort of this disconnect between what a parent is thinking should be happening with their child's role on the team and what a coach is. Coaches, first of all, sees them every day in practice, knows what's happening, knows what other goals they might have for the team, but also is the bigger context, like 
potentially that child in a soccer game never makes the run back on defense and you don't notice that. You think, my child never gets beaten on defense. It's like, well, that's because your child never played defense. Um, <laughs> so, you know, coaches are just seeing something different than you're seeing. So just sort of put that out there as something to sort of think about if you're not understanding the decisions that, you're, that a coach might be making, that you are literally seeing a different game than they're seeing, which, isn't, which is obviously not a bad thing, it's just different. Um, so again, I just try to, try to ask you to think about that. You know, all of our students at Williams, for the most part, are overachievers, right? They're used to being successful, they're used to being you know, near the top of their class, being one of the better players on their team. Um, and so sports has generally been an arena of success for them, and this might feel different to them, you know, in the transition from being a senior in high school and one of the top players on your team, you know, you sort of start at the bottom again, you need to learn a new system, a new coach, um, a new way of playing, and also how are you going to fit in. So we're really trying as coaches to think about how we help them transition, and you are real partners in that, and helping them understand, like, hey, it's going to feel different. It's, you know, when we talk about how do we potentially redefine success for them, maybe it's making the team, getting a few minutes, um, you know, the friendships they're making, the unbelievable good coaching they're getting, the, again, the friendships that they're making along the way are really valuable and the things that they will, will remember most are their teammates and their coaches much more than their wins and losses or their minutes. Um, and then, so we always ask our parents to try to help them by, you know, if you're keeping their stats and tracking their minutes and reporting them back, that's not helpful to them. Um, it's stressful, actually. Our students sort of report that as feeling stressful. Um, they don't want you to be disappointed. So we have found that if a parent is comfortable with their role and can be positive about like pointing out the positive things that are happening on the team regardless of your student's role, it really helps the students feel better about their participation. You know, they can, they can still aspire to be in those minutes and to be starters, but understanding where they are at the moment and what, how they fit into the full team, which is what the coaches will be talking to them quite a bit. Um, you know, and you can just, the fun part is like you've done all this hard work and now you get to sit back, and be a fan, watch some great sports, Watch your students cheer for the team and cheer for their teammates. Um, so I'm going to pass them on to you guys. I'll introduce the coaches. We didn't review our order, but we'll just go in this where you're seated, which is uh, Kevin App is our men's basketball coach, Megan Gillis, women's ice hockey, and Nate Hoey is our women's track and field coach. And they're going to uh, share a little bit about what they're trying to accomplish with their teams and expectations they might have. And I'll say a couple words, and we'll have some time for questions at the end of things that you're curious about. All right. Um, so three years ago, uh, my wife and I were getting ready for our, our first child. And, um, you know, I know everybody was there at one point. And what do you do that first time? Uh, you're told you got to go to classes, read books, uh, articles, ask questions um, to, you know, take on this new challenge called parenting. And uh, what do you quickly find out? Um, grandparents trump experts in every decision possible. All right, uh, and you really learn just good luck. All right, that's basically every article, every book, uh, every class ends with some different form of advice, and it ends with good luck, do your best. And um, you know, you also, you know, I was joking with my wife. You learn about other parents and how uh, impressive they are. Uh, I'm not that old yet. I'm getting older. But when I was in high school, you know, the sports parents, you know, suburbans, explorers, minivans. Uh, now you read these articles and observe these, these helicopter parents, uh, lawnmower parents. Uh, my new favorite one they're talking about is the, the Zamboni parents, uh, clearing the ice you know, for, their, for their kids, making it as smooth as possible. Um, so I went home and I said, I, I don't know if the Honda Pilot was the right investment for us, Katie, but uh, let's, let's see if it gets us where we need to be. Um, so again, whatever you drove, uh, you're here. And uh, it's a tremendous accomplishment uh, for your sons and daughters. Williams College, uh, moving day, if it's your first child, uh, you're going through those same questions and feelings I was three years ago on um, what are you supposed to do? And I won't, I'll be there in about 15 years, and you can tell me if there's any books or articles that, that give you any advice. Um, so what now? And, um, you know, my perspective, you know, I, I played in college. Um, for wonderful parents that I say the best thing about them, the only thing they knew about my sport is I enjoyed it. And um, I've now been coaching for 10 years, played for four years in college, and that's still the only thing they know about basketball, uh, is that I 
have a job centered around it and teaching it and that I enjoy it. Uh, so, but I would encourage you as parents to do the same thing we ask our teams. And that's first, as, as Ms. Melody was saying, shed any kind of results-based expectations of playing time, of winning, of um, you know, goals, of accolades. Um, you know, because you're coming into teams with everybody was really, really good. And, uh, and you'll learn quickly that's not what it's about. So shed those expectations because you really don't have much control over it. All right? Um, enjoy the people. All right? There are unbelievable uh, people around you. All right? People in this room will become some of your best friends. Uh, and I'm talking to the parents over the next four or five years. Uh, some of your best future friends are in this room. All right? So enjoy the people. All right, if you haven't, because you've been carrying boxes and holding your cell phone, uh, trying to figure out where to go, uh, look up. You're in a beautiful location. Your sons and daughters are. Uh, enjoy it. All right, enjoy it. Um, and enjoy watching your children grow. All right, it's going to, they've probably amazed you uh, for 18 years. They're going to amaze you even more uh, these next four and beyond. All right. Uh, in my experience, the biggest challenge your sons and daughters will go through is the transition from high school and college and what that transition is is they now have more control over their choices than ever before all right no one is really going to tell them when to go to bed all right or what to eat or when to eat uh, or if to eat all right they have to make those decisions all right they're going to go from having class six seven hours a day to some days not having class some days having class for an hour and what are they doing with their time those other uh, parts of the day. And that to me is really the biggest uh, difference and the challenge um, and the hardest part for the parents, all right, because a lot of those choices you've been making, all right, if you're making lunches, dinner, all right, breakfast, all right, setting their alarms and waking them up, you've been making those decisions. Um, you know, so we encourage here, set big goals, all right, but we really have our teams focus on that, that other aspect, all right, or how are your daily decisions going to put you in position to accomplish things. All right, on the panel here, we, we all had a goal, all right, of winning a national championship this year, this past year, all right. Uh, Nate's indoor team won the national championship, all right. Megan, made, made Megan and my teams, who came one weekend short of the final four, all right, uh, feel bad, but no. Thanks. Uh, but no, I, I, those are the goals we set here at Williams. All right, and it's, it's a great place. All right, but it's a simple equation. All right, we talk about choices and habits lead to different results and consequences. All right, and I, I encourage the parents to really help us out as coaches all right, and align the student athletes' thought processes with the choices part of that simple equation. All right, it sounds simple, all right, but it's really, really hard. Um, sometimes for the transition to college because those results are harder than ever to achieve individually because right, you're surrounded by other high achievers and collectively all right um, so you have to put a lot of time in all right they're gonna have great moments I just mentioned some that our teams had last year all right that are the big winning moments all right the buzzer beaters all right the late goals all right the late relays for a championship all that stuff you're gonna have all right. You're going to have all the little moments that you're going to remember even more than that with your team and your travel all right, and the little inside jokes and relationships. All right. And they, if they haven't done it yet, they're going to fail. All right. We're going to lose multiple buzzer beaters in a two-week period all right, that, that keeps the coach up all night. All right. You're going to come up one weekend short. All right. You might get injured. You might not play for the first time ever. Um, and as coaches or as parents, when they call you and you know, they may or may not complain about that or all sorts of other stuff over the next four years. All right, get them focused on the front end of that equation. All right, the choices that they're making. All right, the habits that they're kind of creating on their own. All right, because that's really, all right, we all do it through different avenues, different sports, but that's the core uh, kind of lesson we're trying to teach them for when they're uh, mothers, fathers, all right, employees, bosses someday. Just that simple equation of your choices hopefully get you to the results you want, all right? But you only have control really over that one aspect of the, uh, of the equation, all right? Um, if you write notes, you should follow the notes, all right? Uh, that's another little lesson, all right? Again, just always teaching, always teaching, all right? But 
again, as, as you know, lastly, the only thing I, had, I had is um, remember that we have the same goals as you do as parents, all right? And that's for your sons and daughters uh, to grow up and become wonderful people, all right? We're teaching that in a very unique and fun way, all right? And, but I can assure you every choice that every coach in our department makes, all right, is with that consequence in mind, all right? It's to make your, your sons and daughters all right, better people, all right? And sometimes that's through failure, some through that, it's through these high moments and relationships, all right? But your role in that is keep encouraging them on the front end, all right? Their choices, all right? Their habits that they're creating uh, day in, day out, all right? That'll serve them better, all right? It's an absolute pleasure uh, to work here, all right? To represent Williams, uh, to coach your sons and daughters, uh, to get to know, you know, every sport here. That's what our community is about. It's about those relationships, all right? Um, I already got, if there's any field hockey, September 7th, all right, Tufts Williams field hockey has been on my calendar, all right, since June, all right? So I'm going to be there in my field hockey sweatshirt I just got. Uh, so I'm ex excited to become fans of all of you. Um, so again, enjoy it. Congratulations, and uh, we look forward to being a part of it. I'm going to ask Lisa if I can go first next year so then I don't sound as redundant. Um, remind me after this. Uh, but uh, Alphabetical, Megan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, welcome to Williams and congratulations on having your child become a college athlete. Uh, you spent a lot of time and effort, as Lisa alluded to, to get to this point. And thank you. Uh, we're excited to work with them. For the first time um, speaking at this panel, I actually know how you feel right now. So um, the same as like the college open for opening day today, they also opened their daycare. So I dropped my almost one-year-old off uh, for a very first day. Yeah. And all my babysitters are back on campus, so I'm pretty excited about, about that. Um, but all those emotions that like I'm feeling, you're feeling today, that's what your son or daughter is going to feel for the next four years playing a college sport. So um, excitement, apprehension, um, kind of questioning, or just really pumped about winning that league championship. Those, that whole gamut, right, of highs and lows is going to happen. And all we are now, um, we're supporters, okay, you and I. And we're just trying to help them, like Kevin said, uh, become better people. Um, win some games along the way, and it's now like they're driving their own bus, right? And we're just there, and um, team chemistry is everything, and you're a huge part of that chemistry, and how um, you react when things go well and how you react when things don't go well, they're, you're their parent, right? They're listening to how you react and how um, you feel about everything. So um, just really keeping that in mind and um, all they want, like, Kevin and Lisa said is for you to be um, happy for them and, and to support them and that's what we want is the best for them as well. Um, what we talk about a lot, it's, it's not about being perfect, right? It's just about being intentional and it's not about comparing yourself to the person next to you or that other team. It's just about comparing yourself to how you were yesterday, right? That's all that we can control and I think it's hard with uh, social media these days and just knowing how all their friends are doing at every other move-in day wherever they are right now there's constant comparison and as much as you can just be like I get to go to one of the best schools in the country and play in the best athletic department in the country like that's a pretty good <laughs> day to be so um, whatever you did to get them to this point um, if you want to tell me after this love to have my daughter here in 17 years, so any advice is welcome. Um, I think for the other fun part is for the first time, like, there's no next anymore, right? This is it. Like, we've had a couple players go and play pro for hockey or basketball or track. Um, but I didn't know if that was true or not, but I'm sure it is. They're very good. Um, but that, so if that happens, that's an added bonus, but like this is it, right? This is like what they've worked for. Um, they've reached the peak and it's so fun for us to, to work with them at this level. And it's time for you to just like relax and enjoy it. It's not gonna be easy, you know, the saying, it's not gonna be easy all the time, but it's gonna be worth it. And um, they're gonna love it. And sometimes they're not and that's okay. And just letting them enjoy that ride. Uh, we're trying to just 
develop them um, to be good stewards for the whole Williams community. And like many coaches, um, trying to just encapsulate as much as we can. We have core values, and for us, we talk about what it looks like, which I think is pretty common, but then the really unique thing, we talk about what it doesn't look like, and just tr kind of create a common language on the team. And you as parents, when you're talking to your son and daughter, you'll pick up um, on the cues of like what that uh, ethos or team culture is all about for, for their team, and just trying to help them channel that, um, because you know when we won, um, NESCACs last year, like everybody's smiling, regardless of um, you know what happened. Um, we had kids actually with you know had been sick the night before, weren't playing. Um, they're still smiling, right? They're not. They're just happy to achieve that goal um, as a team and to do it together with people that they're going to be friends with for the rest of their lives. Um, and then I think, like Kevin said, we still want to set individual goals, um, make those individual goals happen, but it's all in relation to like, how does it help the team get better? Obviously, if the individuals are getting better, then the team's getting better, um, but it's not at all costs. Um, and so I think it's now you're playing the sport uh, for the purest sense that you've probably played it for since you were maybe six years old, right? You, you're not, there's no ulterior motive of getting to where you need to be, you're here. Um, so just enjoying that. And then um, the only few last things I'll touch on is they have so many resources um, beyond just us coaches here at Williams. They are truly spoiled. Um, aside from all the academic resources that they have, um, whether it's someone to read over their paper before they submit it, help them with their problem set. I mean, I could talk for an hour about uh, just the academic ones, but um, there's a college nutritionist. There's a sports psychologist. Um, as most of you know, there's a strength and conditioning staff. Um, then there's us for the more technical aspects, but they have all those resources all the time. Um, they can use them as much or as little as they want, but um, there's help for them um, at every aspect of their game, um, whether it's eating, the mental side, the physical side. Um, they're really well looked after, and so um, if you see them failing um, or struggling in any of those, you know um, that we have experts. Um, this college nutritionist has worked with professional athletes, still does right now, um, part-time. Uh, the sports psychologist, he has worked with professional athletes. Uh, so these are you know, high-end people who know what they're doing. I will defer a student athlete to them when I think they need it, so um, they, we have all of those resources. Uh, the, Last piece is just, I know you don't want to be thinking about graduation on the day that you drop them off, um, but as every parent told me at graduation last year, they're like, 18 years is going to go by so fast, like I can't believe it, cherish every moment uh, with your daughter, and these four years are going to fly by. You probably couldn't believe it when you were at, you know, senior graduation last spring, you know how quick these next four are gonna go. Um, so just enjoy it. And then what we do is help them uh, get to that next chapter. And from all my recommendations that I've written over the past nine years or however long I've been here is, um, you know, I just wrote a list. Growth and development in regards to team play. Staying positive through adversity. Self-motivation and advocacy. Being a good leader and a good follower. Um, all of those things like we can talk about as coaches that professors who have them um, for one semester might not be able to, to get to as much. And that's the beauty of playing a college sport is all those other intangibles that it teaches your child and makes it easy for us to help them uh, get set up for that next chapter. So congratulations. Thank you for um, sending them to spend four years with us. Welcome. Uh, we're super excited that you are all here. Um, you're definitely going to hear a lot of um, common threads within our programs, and that's true for all of the teams here at Williams. Uh, we're super excited to have you all here. I know this is an exciting, nerve-wracking, scary day, kind of all balled into one. Um, any chance that I get to talk about our team and our vision and what we like to do, I am all in. So when I get the email from Lisa, I'm like, all right, track. So uh, again, my name is Nate Hoey. I'm the head women's track and field coach here at, uh, at Williams. And um, you're about to go on to the journey of what you already know. Is, but this is such an amazing, special place with a tremendous amount of support. Um, as uh, 
as my colleagues were just saying. Um, within our team, you know, the vision that we have for our program is we want everybody on the team to set really high goals and aspirations individually. We as a team set really high goals and aspirations, but it's very important that they all know they are not defined by a result. Right? Like the results are driven by the process, meaning what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. That process is driven by them, their character, who they are as a person. Who they are as a person is driven by the people that they are surrounded with and those relationships. And those relationships are driven with true connection. And so, yes, we strive for big things, but it is merely a byproduct of this awesome and really messy journey over the four years that they're here. Um, and that's the really important thing is, is they were saying and that we do as well. It's just it's all about the journey, um, the process and the relationships that they do make to set them up to a position to really go after uh, those really big aspirations that they have. Um, and the reason that is for us, for everybody, is that I never want their happiness to be on the other side of a result. And what I mean by that is I'm going to be happy as soon as I jump 5'8". I'm going to be happy as soon as I clear 12 feet. I'm going to be happy as soon as I break five minutes in the mile. As soon as they hit that mark, they're very driven individuals. They're happy for a very brief moment and then immediately push that goalpost standard a little bit farther down, right? And so if the happiness is always on the other side of something, they're actually never going to get there. And so for us, that is why we are so journey driven, right? Like they are, we will we'll embrace that, um, the chase of everything that they do. And yeah, we're going to celebrate when it goes well, and we're going to be there to support each other when we come up short because it's meaningful to them. They pour so much into it. But that is why we are so process, journey, and relationship driven with what we do. Um, and so what we talk about all the time is attitude and effort uh, and execution and being a great teammate and letting go of the fear of failure and, and, or, or leaning into that fear that they might have. Um, and that's like really foundational to everything. And so if they're going into a meet or an exam or a presentation and they're just so worried, oh, I gotta, I gotta break five minutes a mile, I gotta break five minutes, as soon as I break five minutes, my teammates are gonna like me more, my coach is gonna give me more attention, whatever it is that causes that anxiety for them, that's an incredibly limiting mindset that's gonna prevent them from being able to replicate what they've been doing in their training over and over again and execute their plan for that day. Um, but if they can be free of that fear or really le lean in and dive into it or dance with it, as we like to say, um, it's going to allow them to go out there and execute and replicate what they've been doing. It sure does not guarantee that they will achieve what they're going for, but it's going to put them in a much, much, much better position to do so and doing so in a more joyful state. And that's really everything that we are all about. Um, Results are a byproduct of that awesome journey, and it is a very messy journey. It is not a nice, clean, linear path. Life in your four years in college is not going to be a nice, clean, linear path. There's ups, there's downs. It's all over the place, and that's okay. Um, again, they were talking about there's so many resources here um, that you can take advantage of to help you through that, because that messy part of the journey is where we grow. It's where we get better. Um, I always say to our team at the beginning of the year, it's like everybody here, including the coaches and myself, are going to hit some kind of a speed bump, whether it's athletic-related, school-related, life-related, more than likely hitting speed bumps in all of those categories, multiple ones, and that's okay. You know, just talk to somebody, talk to the coach, talk to a teammate, your JA, Dean's office, they can really help point you to the amazing support services that are here to help you through that. Um, to the parents, how can you help and support? Um, kind of echoing what's been said earlier is just being there. You know, when they're calling um, to, to, to vent or just explain some sort of frustration or speed bump they're going through, just be there to listen. Remind them to take a deep breath and just focus on that next step. Um, encourage them to come talk to a coach or a JA or a dean. Um, can really, really help them. Um, to the students that are here, again, welcome. And uh, these next couple of weeks in particular are incredibly exciting, but also uh, nervous and some anxiety that's there. Um, I'm super excited for you to, to go through this journey that you're about to go through. And um, just welcome to all of you. We're excited about the year ahead. inspiring. It was exciting. Thank you. But I, sadly for you, I do not. <laughs> uh, so in closing, uh, just want to again welcome you as part of our Williams family and 
when I say you're part of our Williams family, it's in the same way that we don't always choose the members of our family, and that we remind you that when you don your Williams garb and you're on the sideline with whatever team emblazoned, you represent us. So, you know, we, as a conference and as a country, actually, in Division III um, NCAA, we're really excited about and invested in sports, um, sportsmanship initiatives, and some of that is what's the fan behavior, because we ask you to think about, you know, you're not yelling at officials, you're not yelling at your coach, your student, other coaches, you're just, again, like we said before, enjoying and cheering <laughs> and being as positive as you can be and that you're representing us well. Um, and when you travel to other campuses, that you're doing that as well. And that part of the um, thing that we've tried to do across all athletics is decouple athletics from alcohol consumption. So again, we ask you not to bring alcohol to events, not to provide it if you're hosting a team event and you're not providing alcohol to our athletes because we would not um, serve alcohol to our athletes. Uh, most of whom are underage. Uh, you will also, a little bit of business, you will be getting an email about secondary insurance, which, again, just like you don't like talking about graduation, you don't like talking about a potential injury. So you can kind of put it in the back of your head, just answer the email and send your information, and if, unfortunately, your child suffers an athletically related injury in practice or in a game, there is some help in paying some of those medical bills, which is very helpful when you need to get there. I myself have tapped into that this year um, with a child that was hurt. Um, I just want to assure you on a few fronts, uh, Megan alluded to nutritional needs. Uh, there is a nutritionist, but also that we are trying very hard to provide your students when they're traveling on the road with enough um, food to fuel them. We pay a lot of attention to them. We're hoping that we don't need additional support with that. Um, we try to supply a, a baseline, a certain amount of equipment for your athletes. There are some pieces that they need to buy themselves. Um, if you have a child on financial aid, there is a program that we try to tell them about that um, can help subsidize some of that equipment. So for instance, we don't buy rackets, but if your child was on financial aid, there is some support for that um, in a formula that they will get an email about, but just so that you're aware of that. Uh, I said that already. Um, occasionally parents, maybe parents of captains on your teams will send emails saying, hey, we're doing a tailgate, or we want to buy this, or send money or something. Uh, first of all, we've asked them, I think you got that letter from me, we've asked people not to ask you for money, um, of other parents, um, it still happens occasionally. But I want you to know that any of those things, buying team swag or participating in a tailgate, like that's all optional and you don't need to do it. Your students will be taken care of, their equipment needs are met, their nutritional needs are met. Um, so there's no need to do that to support your child and you know we want these events to be open and welcoming and comfortable for everybody. Um, as they said, I'm sure we'll have a great year with lots of ups and downs, as we always have. Um, we're excited to get to know your children and work with them. As they said, this journey with them is the highlight of our life and the central part of our work and the thing that's so rewarding because so many amazing students come here and the relationships we have with them and the families is deeply rewarding. And we've all said it, you know, sit back, cheer, relax, enjoy it. Your child's at Williams College. That's fantastic. Um, we all get to feel good about that. And again, really just enjoying that. Um, if you have any questions for us, of the panel or me, this is a time to, to ask some of those. Yeah. Hi, thank you all. This is great information. I appreciate it. Um, so just very quickly, for the fall sport athletes, how do you guys balance kind of the orientation activities with like the practice schedule for the next few weeks? Yeah, so we work really closely with the dean's office and the first day's schedule. So when they see the first day schedule, they're going to see lots of things that are highlighted in red, and those things are mandatory um, for first year. So those do not overlap with practices. Uh, and again, there are some things that are a little bit more optional that students might want to go to or need to go to, so they'll work with their coach on that. So again, we've tried really hard to, to manage. There is, for sure, some choices that they need to make, and coaches will expect them to be at practice, but they can certainly talk to them if there's a particular conflict that's present for them. We have, again, avoided any of the practice times, avoid any of the required activities. Anybody else? Yeah, so uh, Williams is part of NESCAC, so out of season um, practices are, are not legally to be run. They certainly, kids can play pickup, so the way they work is they just sort of, you know, we have some, some open space, they set up with their friends, they come and play. They are not covered by athletic trainers. They're not covered by athletic insurance unless they're official things, but certainly we're not going to say to students, you can't play a sport you want to play. So they're student driven. They can, uh, we don't schedule a facility. They'll be like open gym hours and they do obviously talk to each other. They do show up in droves. They do all come and play. Um, 
but it is not something that's required for them to attend. It's something that generally they're excited to do. They do have access to our athletic trainers, I should say, throughout the season. So each sport is assigned an athletic trainer. So students out of season still are in touch with their athletic trainers in terms of, like, they're not at practice, but they're allowed to go and seek counsel and help if they're injured or if they're rehabbing or, you know, sometimes if your student has arrived with an injury, they can be hooked up and be going through rehab. Do you guys record or stream video of any of the games? Or yeah, most of our team sports are uh, web streamed on NSN, and you can find that link is on our athletic website. Almost all of our home games and most conference games are streamed. There's, ours, ours have no charge. Sometimes if, uh, opponents will have a small charge for watching. Ours does not currently have that. Well, no obligation to have questions, and I know you guys are anxious to get out and say goodbye, get on to your next activity, or say goodbye to your student. Thank you. Um, feel free to contact us if you have other questions or send an email. Have a good year. Thank you.